post it to Facebook in front of everybody uh, in the very beginning, so then at the end we can see how many likes it got. And then, um, so that's for Facebook, and then I'm also going to do um, an Instagram post, since we're at the Museum of Moving Image. Maybe it's been around for a while, I don't know, but I love it. Uh, the entire flight here was me doing boomerangs with my son, Roscoe. Um, but basically it creates a, an animated GIF, or a little video that plays back and forth, so it's a seamless loop. And I'm going to do that with all of you guys. And Bob, it'll be like a selfie boomerang, and I need you guys all to wave so that we have some cool moving images in there. Um, and then I'll post that to Instagram, and you guys can all see yourselves there at the end of the show and see how many likes we got for that. <laughs> um, also, I'll be showing a lot of video and stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a chance it's going to go a little long. Um, there's also a chance that I won't be able to bear seeing myself, um, especially the Good Morning America clip that drives me crazy, so I might just stop it. And then... You guys ready? That name, the Bub Log. Um, <clears throat> the posts aren't that great. The photos aren't that great. I swear a lot. It was really just meant for my friends and sort of like tongue in cheek. I didn't understand the power of Bub yet. I didn't understand her mission yet, and didn't understand it. You know, some people eventually started saying, "Hey, kids, read this," and then I really thought about that. Um, and so, you know, obviously, I wanted it to be friendly for everyone. But um, there she is, very young giant ears. So, 29 notes. As you can see, this is the very beginning. Then, fast forward. So this was, the very first post was November 8th, 2011. Fast forward to about six months later. April 5th, 2012 is when this photo goes viral. 43,325 notes. Um, this was in the middle of a life crisis for me, a nervous breakdown. Um, Heartbreak, car breaks down, financial despair, um, depression, crying, really looking back on it, I'm pretty embarrassed. But um, then Corey, of all people, do you remember who Corey is? He had Bob right before me for one day and said, uh, it's not for me. Corey says, hey, man, your Bob's on the front page of Reddit. And I don't know what Reddit is. And um, I go, okay. And at this point, David has already designed the Bub shirt. <laughs> Completely separate of her becoming famous. And so, a few days later, as promised, Bub t-shirts. This is really weird to me. This is like, wow, this is what's going on. Let's make some shirts for fun. And pre-order here. Well, we didn't expect this, but hundreds of people pre-ordered. And... Um, that's when I realized, hey, people, this is really resonating. They're awesome shirts. I mean, they're cool shirts. Awesome cat. Very special thing that's happening. And from the very beginning, um, I said, this is odd. I don't know if I want this, what, what's going on here, but at the very least, we can, you know, donate some money to the shelter or whatever. And that's how that started. Then, uh, this is funny. So the, all we had was the bubble at the time. April 18th, so what, we're talking like 12 days later. Yeah, it's, this is fun. So you have a Facebook page. No, sorry, I just don't have time for Facebook. This is in case anyone can't read. <laughs> Plus their privacy policy sucks. We can still be friends though. Man, I was so cool back then. You know? <laughs> and then um, about a month later, I stopped being cool and made Bob on Facebook this because let's, so her, she's a public figure. I am Bob. I am a real animal, more specifically a very special one of a kind of cat, the number one living creature on our planet. <laughs> 16 likes. She has less likes than people 11 months old at this point. Is that right? Yeah. So not even a year old. Then shortly after her first birthday, I don't know who's ordering these shirts, but a lot of people ordering them. And my friend Jeff, who plays in a band with me called The Sands, which we will hear later because we used a song for the first Bub video. Um, he helped, he's like, I used to do this fulfillment stuff, let me help you out. And so we were just filling these orders and there's one that went to BuzzFeed. I didn't know what BuzzFeed was either, but he goes, I think that's something. And I go, okay, cool. Um, let's throw a free sticker in or something. And then we are also, I sent one out to like Vice. 
Those are the two I remember, sending a shirt out to BuzzFeed and sending a shirt out to Vice. These are people that worked at those places that just loved Bo. And what it turned into was this. Summer Ann Burton posted this article. Meet little Bub, nature's happy accident who was about to win your heart. 275,000 views, um, and that's where everything kind of really got crazy. Um, the next day, Good Morning America called. They wanted us to go be on the show, and um, Bub had never traveled. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to do this. Like, what is this all about? Um, I own a recording studio, I play in bands, that was my world. I didn't want to be known as the guy with the cat. And all the things I worked so hard for, you know, in my life would just be, you know, overshadowed by this ridiculous thing. And I decided it didn't have to be a ridiculous thing. I can continue to do creative stuff. I can work with my friends. I can just do what I think, I can just honor my cat, and, and I truly believe that she was the most amazing creature on the planet. And more importantly, the messages I was getting about her were so heartwarming, and it wasn't just cool cat, it was like, thank you for posting pictures of Bub every day. I couldn't get through grad school if it weren't for Bub. That was the first message I got that was like, wow, this is, this is something. And I realized it's so easy to attach a positive message about adopting, spaying, neutering your pets. That's just what it was all about at the beginning. Like, people like Bub, they want to know more about her, and I can just, you know, add this message to it, and you'd be surprised how many people don't know how important it is to adopt a pet or to spay and neuter your pet, still to this day. Um, so that, that made me realize that, you know, this could be a cool thing. And um, at that point, I also decided a few very important things, that uh, I will never seek out an opportunity uh, to, to try to do something with Bob, I'll only take things as they come. That's been the rule from the beginning, and that's still how it is now. Jason emailed me and said, do you want to do this? And I said, sure. I did not email Jason and say, hey man, I heard you got a cat exhibit. My cat's real famous. Let's do it. <laughs> um, the other rule is no matter who contacts us, what they want to do, I have full creative control, and I get to work with the people that um, I care about. And that's why David Woodruff and my friend Mark Paulman, who has directed all these pub videos, he was the guy behind the camera for that video you just saw. And he is one of my closest friends. I've toured with all these guys and bands and all this stuff. It's always us, and that's why Bub's stuff is so genuine. Um, so anyways, so this happens on June 30th, 2012. And then I found this, and I thought this was really funny. Vice loves Bub more than you do. This is July 24th, so I'm, well, hold on. This, I can't get rid of this thing, I'm sorry. But, um, there are only a few hardcore important facts in life worth memorizing, and one of them is that we like Bub before anyone else do. Okay, hold on. July 24th, 2012. June 30th, 2012. So, I don't know about that, but they did like her pretty early on. Um, but this points out that, so Kelly McClure here had a Bub postcard taped up by her desk. She's wearing a Bub shirt. She was just a Bub fan. And um, that's how all this stuff organically came about. Because people love Bub, she's awesome. Um, and so she also asked if we would make an exclusive Bub video for Vice, which we did. And this um, is, I was talking about this song, is one of my bands called The Sands that rhymed. <laughs> Bub had, uh, I, and this was news to me, I really had no idea how it would go, but um, Bub really just didn't mind anything at all. In fact, she, was, she seemed to be more like perky and alert than ever. And um, we went through Times Square. I, on the other hand, was losing my mind. Um, my sister came with me, and it was very sweet of her to be there, but I was like running around making sure Bub's okay, overprotective stage dad. Um, <laughs> But here Bub had something to say, hey, it's me, Bub, my life is crazy, I saw naked people playing music, and then a bunch of kids touched me all over my amazing body, which sounds bad. <laughs> and here we go. It is finally time to meet Bub, a kitten born the runt of the litter who is now the toast. That's my favorite part, watch me. <laughs> The runt of the litter who is now the toast. Now the toast. The runt of the litter who is now the toast. The litter, is now the toast. How am I friends? Too Where were you doing cooking your nose? Well, she's special. But perhaps I dare say the cutest cat in the world. To bring people away from the computers into a public setting to watch these cat videos um, turn into like this viral event. And I think 
10,000 people showed up. Um, and this is when someone from Vice messaged me and said, hey, we're going to do a short piece on this Crazy Cat Video Film Festival. Are you going to be there? And I said, no. <laughs> and they said, well, why don't you go? And we'd love to follow you around. And um, I said, well, I have, I, have other, I have other things to do in my life. Um, <laughs> but if you pay for me to go, there's no reason for me to say no. You know? <laughs> And they said, well, we can't afford that. And this is when I started to learn how to negotiate without really realizing that I was. Negotiating by saying no is the best way to negotiate. Remember that. If someone wants something and you don't really care, you're in a very good position to leverage. Um, and I really said, well, I'm not going then. And they said, okay, we'll pay for you to go. <laughs> so this is going to be easy. Um, and really, this is an important lesson. If just... Do what you want to do, and if people care enough, they're going to give it to you. So um, that's why my friends and I get to do TV shows for Animal Planet that get really bad ratings, and then we get to um, So this is uh, me unabashedly kissing my cat. Um, everyone should kiss their cat. It brings you happiness. So, um, But anyways, we went to this thing. Vice was just going to do this short little film, I was very skeptical about this, you know, like, oh man, this is it. They're gonna make me look like a, an idiot. <laughs> I'm not an idiot, so they couldn't make me look like one. Um, and it turned out that we really hit it off, the directors, and um, after we did this thing, which was just gonna be the short story, they saw like what a huge turnout there was, and then they, shortly after getting home, they said, hey, we wanna make a documentary about Bub. Are you into this? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? Here's the thing, is they did it without any approval from above. They actually, I guess, Vice, the higher up said no. So they were actually siphoning money to do this, I guess. And um, I didn't know that till the very end. But anyways, they came to Bloomington, did some shooting, and they made this documentary in a very short amount of time. Right around the same time, so we're getting close to like uh, Thanksgiving of 2012, um, I started getting courted, well I got uh, courted by literary agents, and then also by publishers, and this was all very new and weird and scary. Um, my liter literary agent was great, and um, we ended up going with Penguin Books, or Gotham, which was a, was a part of Penguin. Um, but the day that they were about to make an offer was the day that I came home to find Bub completely immobile in a pile of her own urine. But it's hard to have a pile of urine, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, it was sad, it was a hard time, and um, it made all of this very confusing, you know. Um, so I didn't know what to do, and I got on the phone and I told Penguin that um, I, well, so I took Bub to the vet, and the specialist said, you know, that we took x-rays, that's when we discovered she has a rare bone condition called osteopetrosis, that no one really knows, she's the only cat in recorded history to have been diagnosed with this, so there's not really a lot of information besides the the little information there's about humans and rats. Um, but this specialist said, um, it's only gonna get worse. In about two months, she's gonna stop eating. Um, I don't imagine she'll be walking ever again. Um, and that's sort of the best help I could get. <laughs> um, so I told Penguin, I don't think she's gonna be alive for much longer. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. Um, she's obviously not happy, She's not, and I can't just keep her alive for any good reason, so I understand if you want to pass on the book. Well, they didn't, um, but I really didn't care, honestly, about the book. Um, so this was a pretty dark time. So, so we don't all get so sad and all this. Um, I'll play you this video. She does get better. So, um, so this is a video I made. Um, basically... Uh, it wasn't looking very good. Um, I was back to where I was a year before, crying all the time. And then, um, <clears throat> then I saw Bloomington. There's a bunch of like hippies and stuff. So um, I knew that I could find a magician that would help my magic cat. And sure enough, a friend's fiance practiced Reiki. And I didn't believe in that stuff, but I also did believe in stuff. In a, in a way, I guess. Um, I believed enough to have this lady come over every day, and Bub responded extremely well to this energy treatment, which I then per tried to perform myself in a way that I understood, just using intuition and understanding my cat, and knowing that love has its own power. And it really helped Bub. It didn't, she wasn't necessarily walking like she used to, but I could tell she was happy again at least. 
And um, then a fan who knew that Bub was having a hard time recommended a device called the Assisi Loop, which we use to this day. And um, it would take too long to talk about it, but let's just say that it helped her tremendously. And um, after using this loop, she started to stand upright and then walk and run, and that's what this video is about. By being able to jump and do all these things, she's not allowed to do it anymore. Sorry, though. Um, so those, those of you who don't know, um, in November she was running to get food. She was running on the couch and sometimes she gets real bold. She ran on the back of the couch, it's a leather couch, and she slipped while she was running. I was trying to grab her and she fell and hit her elbow. It sounded like this. And um, I, I was like, oh no, this isn't good. She stood up and she couldn't put weight on one leg, but she proceeded to get to the dish and eat. To eat. <laughs> So I was like, well, that, that's a bummer, but also, you know, um, she seems okay. Sorry, I'm just checking to make sure that this it says post pending waiting for a better connection. Sorry. Um, so that was actually a horrible time because then we thought maybe it was a sprain. Um, it deter we determined it was a fracture of her elbow and um, surgeons said that she would need surgery. And for a small creature like her to have surgery is pretty um, risky. And especially because they have no cat was, has ever been born with osteopetrosis and certainly has never been operated on. Um, but we went to Purdue University. They brought their best surgeons. They had two surgeons on board. They got special tools and special, um, special equipment uh, to do it, and they did it right. And um, she actually healed twice as fast as a normal cat. So she's doing great. Okay, so back to, the, <laughs> back to the history of Bob. She almost got eaten by a tiger once. This, uh, this photo looks scarier than it is. Um, this is at the Exotic Feline Rescue Center near us. And um, in the documentary, if you've seen Little Bub and Friends, which is the name of the documentary that Vice made, um, we visited there. So it won Tribeca Film Festival 2013 online festival best feature film, directed by Andy and Juliet. Um, so, this is now 2013, April of 2013, and we flew here to New York City to be in the Tribeca Film Festival, and that was one of the wildest uh, weeks ever. Um, but was like the hot, she was the hot celebrity at Tribeca, and people were pissed. <laughs> and we were staying at the Ace Hotel, and this lady got in the, and she looked down at Bub, and she was like, is that the cat? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, well, the cat's cute, but let me tell you something. We spent, I'm with Magnum ice cream bars, and we spent, I don't know, $20,000 on a solid gold dress for our red carpet thing for some actress to wear, and not a single press person showed up because they were all at your red carpet. It's like, well, shouldn't have spent all that money on a gold dress. Um, it was really exciting. So while we were there, we, let's see, let me... Let me see what's next. Yeah. So while we were there, um, we got a call from The View saying, hey, do you want to be on The View? And I was like, of course. So this is um, us at The View. That's Juliet, the director. And that's, um, oh, what's her name? Whoopi Goldberg. And um, she ran into the room like, bub, bub, bub. And she was a huge fan. And it was really cool. And then I said, hey, um, I want to send you a bump shirt. And she said, well, you can send me whatever you want, but don't waste your time, because I already own all of it. <laughs> um, so I just found all these cute shots. Um, this is one of my favorite shots, because if you see this guy here, that's my friend Jonathan, who, um, from the very, the day I got back from Good Morning America, he said, he, he's a part owner of a pretty big label based on a Bloomington record label. And he had kind of left the label, and he called me, he's like, you're going to need help with all this crazy stuff that's happening. And we drank whiskey and talked about it, and he said, I'll do whatever. He's the greatest guy, very good friend. He never asked for a single thing in return, went on all these trips with me, handled emails, and he always stayed out of every interview, photo. He just didn't want to have anything to do with it until this. <laughs> and he looks so creepy. Okay. So that's, um, there's that. And then also Tom Selleck was there. <laughs> and he came in and I said, look, Bob, it's Tom Selleck. And he looked at me and goes, well, thanks for that. <laughs> Still don't know what he meant by that, but he didn't like it. 
<laughs> what I said, he didn't like it. And then the best part, obviously, was meeting Robert De Niro, who, Tribeca Film Festival is his thing, you know? And um, I was very excited and waiting to meet him. You know, he said in an interview, my, I'm most looking forward to meeting Bob. He's a cat lover. And so I'm, I just found all these photos, too. I think Jonathan took them. And I've told the story many times, and this actually documents the story through photographs. So, he's, so he finally looked at me and he's like, ready to come on over it. And there's paparazzi all over. Not paparazzi, just photographers, but it sounds cool when you see um, And so I was like, yeah, here's Bob. And then, you mind if I hold your cat? And then I go, well, I would love for you to hold my cat, but she's fragile. I, do, I need to show you how to hold her. Do you mind? I'll have to touch your hands. He gave me a funny look and was like, okay, and that's me touching his hands. <laughs> Softest hands I've ever touched. I mean, really, like, it was like weird. It felt like weird little, like the way you, you picture um, Fraggle Rocks to feel, like real soft and fluffy. And, um, and he's like 70 years old. He should not have that, such soft hands. Um, and then there he's got, oh man, look at that. It's like, he's like, the, mo the most recognizable guy in the world. And um, then this is like the best photo. Uh, Getty Images might still be here. Um, this is their photo, I'm sorry. I hope you don't sue me. <laughs> but anyways, that's my cat. That's Robert De Niro. That is proof that it happened. And um, it's very cool. Okay, so now, so that was April 2013. I, I also meant to say, we're, I'm skipping a lot of, tons of crazy stuff. I mean, we've, Bumps met tons of celebrities, we've done lots of crazy stuff. There's also, you know, there's a story of Spooky, our cat. There's a story of Trudy, our dog. There's a lot of stuff that I'm leaving out. I'm just trying to hit the main points here. So this is when Bob met Grumpy Cat. This is at the Walker Art Center's second cat video film festival or internet film festival, whatever you want to call it. And their whole angle with this was that they wanted Bob and Grumpy to meet. That was like the big thing. It was a part of the Minneapolis State Fair, the biggest state fair in the country. And this was like in a big arena, 12,000 people. Um, so the, my favorite part about this, Grumpy Cat is a wonderful cat. I, I think she's very unique, very special, very sweet. She's actually a little heavier than Bub, but more, Bub's very long and thin, like a weasel. <laughs> and Grumpy Cat, I just realized we're gonna see, um, looks like a regular cat that someone chopped out the middle and then smashed the front of the back. You know, it's like this, she just this weird ball. Anyways, this is then. Oh. I was laying, I was rolling around the floor of the walker, telling people, get out of my way, I'm making a movie. <laughs> that Bob met Grumpy Cat in the very same room. I met this woman, and she's now my wife. Oh! <laughs> and we have the photo of the moment we met. It's pretty amazing. Um, Stacy was working her second day at the Walker Art Center. She didn't even have a Facebook page. She had no idea what a famous cat was, but everyone else at work was going to meet the famous cat, so she decided she would as well. Otherwise, she would be sitting by herself in her new office doing nothing. So she came downstairs, she met Grumpy Cat, and then came over and said, that, that cat seems very sad, but this cat seems very sweet. And I, um, I tried to find things to talk about awkwardly because I thought she was nice looking and sweet. And um, then I got drunk later that night, and the curator of the thing, Scott Stulen, I said to him, do you know that redheaded, the redheaded girl? <laughs> you give her my email address. Which is really lame. <laughs> to give a guy who may not know the girl your email address to give to the girl so that she, it's a really bad idea. <laughs> but she emailed me the next day. Turns out that Scott was a good friend of hers and he's the one that got her the job and he said that Mike's a nice guy. You should email him. And now we're married and we have a kid. And he's great. 
So that's um, that's how but you know you take care of a magical cat and then she repays you tenfold. So thank you very much. But, although Roscoe is um, kind of a thorn in her side these days. He'll get better. Roscoe's my son. Okay. Whew, this is let's see. Oh that thing is posted by the way. It worked. You guys look great. Sorry to the people over here, you're just not in it, but we can feel your spirit. It's doing pretty well. Let's see um, what some people are saying. Damn, lol. <laughs> One situation running, eight everyone release while. It's like people just forget how to use the language. <laughs> Oh, okay, I wish. Okay. Sorry if any of you posted these things. I don't, I don't need to make fun of you. Fifth. That means that they're the fifth person when clearly they're not. They're like 29th. <laughs> Although, for once, I think first was first. Good job, Jackson Sack Rider. Okay, enough. What's uh, his name? Sack Rider. <laughs> Okay, so now um, I believe this is September 3rd, 23rd. Um, <clears throat> so Lil Bub's Big Show, um, have you all seen it? Yeah. Okay, I put together a reel of the best of, and it's not really the best of because I think it's all awesome. Um, but I kind of threw it together, we can watch it. I don't know how much time is left, but I think after this it goes pretty quick, but you're, you're having fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Um, so I announced the big show on her birthday, like this. Oh, yeah. So, some might say so. TV show that Animal Planet approached us about doing. It was one of those things where I was very strict that uh, I have to do with my friend Mark, who's directed the big show and all those other things, and then I had to write it, or at least pick writers that will work, that I can work with. And um, it's pretty hard doing something like that on such a big level. First of all, I've never had made a TV show like that before, and um, the budget they gave us was ridiculous. They also didn't pay us any money, and you think that if your cat has its own show on it, network television that you would get some sort of compensation, but you don't, or at least I didn't. So my negotiation tactics didn't work that well. But I would have rather have had full creative control and not get paid any money despite hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of work and travel um, than to get paid a bunch of money and not feel good about it. Um, so anyways, it was crazy. We got Amy Sedaris to do the show and Andrew, who's always been a big supporter. We had eight hours to shoot the show in New York City. They demanded that we did it in New York, where it's much more expensive than doing it in Chicago, where the production company was based out of. Um, so we literally, and there was, if you've seen the show, you, you had one chance to see it, really. The, the, the day they, de they ne the night they debuted it, and then I think the ratings were so bad that they, uh, but basically, you know, we had to work with our creative team, creative team, um, but more like the anti-creative team. So any cool, fun idea that we might have, they would nix. And then, the thing is, the show's weird. You can't take the weird out of the show, but you can take the funny out of it. And they really, like, Amy is a, she's a, she's an improviser, and a lot of the stuff she improvised they didn't like. The awkward silences are our favorite part. <laughs> of the show. And they took them all out. They wanted to be one thing, we wanted to be another thing, and then it turned out to be its own thing, which is probably the weirdest show that's been on network television. Um, the coolest thing is no one ever caught um, the scene where um, the hamster pees on Amy's hand. And it makes it into the show. And I didn't notice it till way after. Um, I was going to show the show, but I don't think we have time. But um, you can find clips of it online if you haven't seen it. Um, I think they also aired it in Indonesia. <laughs> Little Bub's Big Fun for the ASPCA. So um, this is something that um, 
we worked with the ASPCA on, and it stemmed from the fact that I had been raising money for animals in need in a way that I did not feel was fair, because I am not an expert on where this money should go or just to decide where it goes. And by the time Bub became a national celebrity and people were supporting, you know, buying stuff from the Bub store and coming to our appearances, um, I didn't, you know, they're part of the reason that you guys are doing this is because you're supporting our cause. And um, I'm not qualified to choose where this money goes. So the ASPCA was very, very accommodating and very excited to work with us. And we recreated the first national fund for special needs pets. And um, I was very um, vocal about what I wanted from it. And um, the main thing was that all of the money collected, it doesn't technically go to the ASPCA, it goes into our fund. The ASPCA is um, responsible for administering the grants um, and then going through the applications and then administering the funds to who they think deserves it or needs it best. So all the money that we raise goes to uh, shelters all over the country. Um, so the ASPCA was very excited and they said in February of 2014, we sure hope we can get to $10,000 by the end of the year so we can open up grants. Um, for the fund and we reached $10,000 in like the first 14 days <laughs> and um, to date we just uh, have exceeded $200,000 um, awarded so it's pretty amazing what this little company has been able to do um, and, uh, and that doesn't include all the money that we've raised um, directly for shelters like every appearance we do um, if we're hosted by a shelter, half the money goes to the fund, half the money goes to the shelter. So um, it's hard to keep track of, uh, but I think we're, we probably raised close to four or five hundred thousand dollars since we started making appearances three years ago. And um, we're, we're going to be announcing um, sort of the year wrap up, which will um, from the ASPCA, which will have some specific stories of how funds are used and. Um, that's the best part for me is actually seeing that these funds are used and animals have been saved thanks to Bub and everyone's support. Okay, what do we have here? Oh yeah, uh, my cat did a show with the president's wife. Will Bub's Big Show. Featuring special guest, the show of Mama. Without further ado, please welcome the tiny cat from the tiny town of Bloomington, Indiana. Part of this campaign, and I had this awesome idea that we're going to fly out there and do all this really cool, fun stuff, and then the White House nixed all of it and said, we'll just give you the same video we give everyone else, and she'll just say, bub. Aww. And it was like, it, and the script said, hello, little bub. And I was like, can I please just ask for her to say, hey, bub, instead of hello, little bub, so it sounds like they're friends. And she, they said no. I said, please, 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 I won't do it unless she says, hey, bub, and then also get her to say, good job, bub. And then they agreed to do it. So those are the two best parts of the thing. Um, okay, so this is a book um, that um, we did a Kickstarter for earlier in 2015. Um, it is an animated or an illustrated children's book, and um, it got funded, and I'm really proud of it. It's this dog, Norbert. Have you seen Norbert? Mm. I think he's the only animal that is cuter than my cat, Bob. <laughs> he's smaller than Bob, and he's, he's an unbelievably cute, and he does high fives. So. <laughs> um, sorry, Bob. He's better than me. <laughs> Uh, and then um, a thing that is, uh, is really close to my heart is this album. You can't read the title because this thing that won't go away right here. But it's Little Bob Science and Magic. I'm assuming if you guys are here, you probably know about the album. Um, but a little background. Um, do you remember that birthday video where I jump in the water and the birthday music was playing? So that's the first time I asked my friend Matt. Do you remember Matt from the very, very, very beginning holding Bob? I said, hey, man, can you make a really trippy, sort of spacey bub version of Happy Birthday, and he said, sure, I can do that. And he had a really good time doing it. And so um, our band went to Japan, and I play, paid for his plane ticket. And he owed me money for the plane ticket, but he could not pay me back. So I said, how about an exchange? Instead of paying me back, you just write a bunch of cool bub-centric music for bub videos. And he said, okay, that's a good trade. And so he did what we called bub frenzy, and he just he had, he had like writer's block for a long time, and then he made all these... Ah, I'll just show you the video. 
You're watching the Mike Adams Show. Oh my god. <laughs> you may not look like much on the outside, but would you believe that on the inside, there's a cat recording her very own music album? It's gonna take a look. <laughs> what is so funny? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you are the composer of the album, but you also describe yourself as a creative vessel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I sit down to try to write my own music, it's like, is this any good? Is this any good? I don't know. I don't know. This, this is not good. I, I, can't, I can't do this. But working on these pub songs, it feels like nothing else I've ever done in songwriting before. So I'm curious, how does Bub communicate with you? Well, I don't really know it's happened until it's happened, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like, I'm getting a transmission, here it comes, what is she saying? F sharp, F sharp, C. No, it's not like that. Well, this is just, you know, hey Matt, can you write a song for a bub video? A couple hours later, Matt sends me a song and it's like the most brilliant thing Matt's ever written. Did Matt really write it? I think so, I mean, he's a brilliant guy, but he had a little extra help, if you ask me. So what, how would you like to be the first person to hear a finished track? I'd love it. I'd love to. Really? Yeah. All right, man. That right. phone's right there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, if you were wondering what was so funny, um, that was sort of, so Ben Lumsdane is the guy that actually played drums on the album, but that guy's not Ben Lumsdane, because Ben Lumsdane was on tour, and I thought it would be funny, because that's Addison Rogers, who is a, obviously a very funny guy. He's well known in our town, and everyone knows who Ben is. So I thought it'd be funny that to use Addison instead, and the reason Addison is laughing is because he's not actually the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have to tell you that. Um, okay, so this went over a little bit. I have to pee really bad, but I'm gonna hold it just so you can ask Bob some questions. So this is always the awkward moment where no one wants to get up. But listen, this is your only chance, so. <laughs> what is Theo? <laughs> she wants you to step up to the microphone. There we go. Hi, Bob. What's your favorite flavor of yogurt? What is plan? That's not even... Did you mean plain? Oh, speaking of plain, guess what? You're you. Number three. Three's my lucky number, so you come over here. I mean, it's Bub's lucky number. And I'm really sorry I had to catch up on emails. That's why I'm typing. Bub, how does it feel to be on stage? She means cool. <laughs> Wait, don't go, don't go, don't go. I, I, I asked you, hold on, Bub has some... Some invisible yogurt. <laughs> no, hold on, we're gonna hold on, hold on one second. Actually, we okay. So I had this great, this really awesome plan, and I already screwed it up because <laughs> I forgot the yogurt. <laughs> so while we wait for the yogurt, you, you can come up. But you're you need to stay because you're gonna open up the yogurt for her. Okay. Bob, on a scale of one to ten, how soft are you? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you don't need to scream. <laughs> when you were with Grumpy Cat, did, did you get along with him?
Thanks for your question. Again, I'm really, I don't mean to be rude. I, I just really have some emails that I have to catch up on. You can go ask another question. Oh, Jeff, I'm going to ask another question. Where's that sweet little girl? I need you to administer the yogurt. Are right, you ready? So stand all the way over there. All the way over there. Go back, 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 back. So I'm not very good at instructions, but just bear with me. Okay, you ready? So what you're going to do is I gotta pee, let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so the true, I'll, I'll answer this because it's kind of my fault. Um, I do a lot of, I've done a lot of interviews, and sometimes I get bored doing them, or I just am sleep deprived, or whatever. And apparently during one interview, off the top of my head, I said that it was short for Lillian Bubbles. I did not remember that I did this. <laughs> and then someone on the internet said that, it's short for Lillian Bubbles, and I made a big deal about that not being true, and I thought to myself, that's pretty clever. <laughs> and then I realized that I thought of it. <laughs> and um, then I announced that it was true. But it's not true. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what that means. Hi, Bob. I really want to know, what is it like being a celebrity? You never know what she's going to say. Wow. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> What's your secret to being so cute? <laughs> Sorry, she really can't give that up because then next thing we know you'll be up here eating yogurt in front of everybody. Thank you. 
She's, she's good. She might have diarrhea. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you wear kitten mittens in the winter to stay warm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Guys, this was a lot of fun. I hope you had a good time. Um, to those of you that will be um, meeting us, I just wanted to say thank you for your very generous donation. It goes a long way. Uh, it means a lot to us. Um, also, I wanted to say that um, these meet and greets are the most challenging thing we do. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. So we just ask that. Um, as much as you want to spend a lot of time with Bub, um, everyone needs, we gotta kind of move fast, and um, I'm gonna try something different this time because the hardest thing is for, for Bub is she likes to sleep. And I don't like to wake her up just to get a good photo with everyone, and, and I think most people understand that. But I also feel bad, and I want to get a good photo. And I think what I'm gonna try to do this time is hold Bub, and then you'll sit next to me, and I'll take your phone, and we'll take a few selfies. <laughs> and um, that'll be the best way to get a good photo, and you can trust me, I, I know what I'm doing here. Um, and then um, I'm going to try and balance that with personalizing your thing and doing the thing, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, guys. Look at all these birth photos. Boom, 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 bo